Very good afternoon to you. It's Jim from Mavstar Observatory. I want to talk about a few things, and I hope that what I've got to say, you know, does soak in to the grey matter. Because we've got 58,000 people now subscribed to this channel, and we have over 20,000 people a week visit the information on the website. You know, we're the only observatory that is tracking and freely giving the information away, but it is to some point being abused. You know, 58,000 people is not a small amount, a number. And I've always said, you know, you've probably got as many subscribers, active subscribers, as what you had on your last video. So in that case, you know, we're talking at least 12,000 people. And out of those 12,000 people, less than the fingers on your hand donated a book or two to the observatory. You know, we live in a very complacent world where what we're looking at here, BP profits double to record 23 billion after spiking oil and gas prices. You know, if we can sit back and allow this to happen, I, I just want to, you know, paint a picture for you here. Elderly couple in a home, can't afford to heat the house and can barely afford to buy food after giving their entire life's work to you know, a government paying their taxes every week, every month, every year for the whole of their lives. Now they've got no heating. You know, these people that run our countries and are responsible for these atrocities that are being committed even in these third world countries and first world countries now should be hung. Nothing short of that for the misery and pain that they have caused millions and millions of people around the world. This isn't something related just to the UK or the United States or Canada, Australia, New Zealand or Europe. This is a worldwide problem and it's down to greed and corruption. And, you know, I say we live in a complacent world because people don't do nothing and are afraid to do anything and don't know what to do even if they do want to do something. I've always said, you know, if you're, you're too lazy to get off your own arse and do something about what is going on, then help somebody that is. Support them. If it carries on, we'll have nothing. Just like they said at that Davos meeting. You will get to a point where you will not have a car. You won't be allowed to have one. You won't own a house or any property or anything. And you'll have no money. And you'll have no food and you'll have no gas and you'll be happy. Really? Have you ever seen anybody on the streets happy? Those people have nothing. Do you think they're happy? Eh? Do you see them skipping up and down the street because they've got nothing? These are degenerates that are running our countries right now. And they need to be tossed out of government because they are supposed to be public servants. They're supposed to work on behalf of the general public around the world and they seem to be serving themselves waxing themselves rich and allowing you know oil companies like BP to put the prices up by double and cripple people in the process financially now this is in free fall it's going to hit the floor at some point it can be caught in mid-air and stopped. Or we can all sit back and allow this to carry on. And this is just one little smidgen of what's going on now. It is like a rampant rapist in a school playground. These governors, these politicians around the world are no different to, you know, predators. They know they are well above the law. They will face no imprisonment for their wrongdoings and they are you know writing their own checks left right and center and it doesn't bother them if the energy prices go up because they are sitting on millions and billions of pounds themselves it should make you sick to the back of your teeth what is going on and you know what the world is complacent just allows it to carry on this is just one of the problems that we face and we've got lots coming. They don't want you eating meat in the future. You know, something that you've done naturally
for thousands of years of evolution, they want to cut it out. You know, they are bringing this world down to its knees and our faces are almost in the dirt right now. We need to stop this. People need to support people that are trying to help others. You know, we need more than, you know, than the people that in care on one hand supporting what we do at this observatory because it is well worth what we've done. You know, I've converted my home into an observatory so that we could monitor the magnetic north pole ourselves because we weren't being given that information. Try and find the information like I supply to you guys anywhere else. Try and find it. Not, I'm not talking about somebody that is reading documents off the internet and regurgitating that on their channels. I'm talking about people that are actually practically doing and using the scientific method like we do here. I can't afford to pay staff, so I have to do everything myself. And that means programming the electronics, building the electronics, getting those out to people that we can trust around the world to take readings as well as taking readings here. We take background readings of radiation, we take muon readings, because we know if we're finding that the muons are going up, there's obviously a lot more interaction taking place in our ap atmosphere with regards to crashing in uh, cosmic rays. You know, they smash into subatomic particles, one of those are muons, we have muon detectors. Try and buy one of those. Well, a neutron detector is a bigger particle, so think about this, that costs £7,000. If it weren't for MIT, you know, allowing us to use then PCB boards, we wouldn't have muon detectors. If it weren't for me building those circuitries up, and you have a look at it, it's all micro-mount surface resistors and transistors on there and chips. You know, the silicon photo multiplier, there isn't a bigger one on the market. You know, we use a five millimeter by five millimeter silicon photo multiplier. That one chip, 118 pounds it costs. And then there's the time invested soldering these onto the board with a pair of tweezers and a magnifying glass and a soldering iron. We could do a hell lot more if we had a little bit more support. I'll show you something else. It's not just the US debt clock because every country around the world has one of these. And I want to ask a question. Is your partner carrying a child right now? Because it's a sobering thought. Before that child is actually born into this world and takes its first breath, it is in debt. Can you believe the sick fuckers are going to slap a debt on a child that has just taken its first breath of air? Because that's the reality of the US debt clock. This debt will never be paid. It will just be put on the next battery or human being that is born into this world. The burden will always be carried onto that next one. If we had responsible governments, there wouldn't be a national debt in any country. But in debt, there is profit. And there is greed, and there is wicked and evil in our world, and it is running rampant like a rapist in a child's playground. Here's the truth about CO2, because it's on the basis of this that they're making trillions of pounds and half of their policies are based on trying to cut CO2. They've blamed CO2 and used it as the victim for all of their problems. It always comes back to CO2, but it's a lie. And there's the evidence slap bang in front of you. It's a complete lie. Should make you sick to your back teeth that we are being lied to in such a manner you know, at this moment, all your top scientists know the truth about CO2. And it's also those scientists that have been pushed out of their jobs. Oh, you're anti-climate. You're a climate denier. You know, you get tucked away in a little closet like that and nobody takes you serious after that point because you're not singing from the hymn sheets of the Pie Piper. Them that wax themselves rich. 
you stand in their way and you'll be soon moved out your way you know that's the truth natural co2 is more aggressively putting co2 into our atmosphere than what mankind is 0.012% is all we're responsible of 4% uh, so 0.4% to start with that's how much gas co2 gas is in our atmosphere 0.4% and out of that 0.4% we emit 0.012% it's nothing it, to start with it's a trace gas anything that's a trace anything is not going to affect anything in a big way so what if we've got 420 parts per million of CO2 by the way that is dropping over the last year there has been a drop in CO2 but your mainstream media won't say nothing because oh my god if that gets out then there's no need to carry on with the bandwagon you know bashing your drum that you've got to reduce CO2 because we're causing global warming well nobody talks about the fact that over in the Arctic Circle there is an extra free square million kilometers of ice nobody says a damn word about that oh i see lots of people coming up with different you know theories on you know why the weather is this that and the other it's simple it's down to the milenkovitch cycle you know we go through glacial periods and interglacial periods during glacial periods then warmer periods the, the co2 naturally increases but when we go back into an ice age and we spend 80%, 90% of our time in a glacial period, the cool period. Guess what? CO2 reduces. Who come out with global warming during a glacial period? What a genius. Absolute genius that guy must have been. Eh? Stating the obvious. You know, you don't have to reshape the wheel, you know. Don't tell me you've made a better round wheel than the round wheel we was already using because that's a joke. What's going on right now is a massive joke. You know what? We live in a complacent world where people will now watch other people be killed right in front of them and won't intervene because they're thinking of themselves. We're in a lot of trouble. And nobody's paying a damn bit of attention from these world governments because they don't give a crap, basically. But we are returning already back into a glacial period. We may be six to 8,000 years already through that 100,000-year cycle. Trust me, this is going to cause severe problems around the world, and nobody's prepared for it. You know, when the ice starts building up on the power cables and the cables snap because of the weight of the ice the electric will not get to your front door. It won't get to the hospitals. It won't get to the factories. It won't get to no one. A grid down scenario. Then you can't get fuel because, you know, everything relies on electricity and power. You know, we are at the door, at that threshold at the door we are returning back into a glacial period and not one government around the world has even merely announced that they've not told people to prepare for it they've not told people that they are preparing for it and that you know we don't need to worry or panic because we will be looked after they've said nothing because they're not interested in real facts real science you know they're not interested in it they're only interested in one thing buying that next helicopter buying that next jet buying that fucking super yacht waxing themselves that rich they can have anything they want where they want all they need is just a couple of little slaves to serve them if the core of our planet slows down and it is slowing down and comes to a stop first of all as it slows down it will affect the dipoles on our planet you know magnetic north and magnetic south it will affect those dipoles if it comes to a stop there will be no magnetosphere that protects us the dynamo will shut down 
that produces the dipoles and the magnetosphere and we will end up looking like Mars if it doesn't restart. That's how serious things are. Couldn't get any worse and all these people can think about is waxing themselves rich. We're looking at the biggest human catastrophe ever witnessed in the world, in history. And it didn't have to be like this. But sadly, it is. There is a link down there if you want to be a supporter. If you want to be proactive. You know what, if not, that's fine. You know, it's not mandatory. It's entirely up to you. I'll say what I usually do. You take care of your loved ones. As always, bye for now.